Hey everyone, welcome back to CryptoCash. Thank you again so much for joining me here. Hope you're having a phenomenal day. Happy Monday to you. Let's take another look here at Bitcoin, see what's going on. It's exciting times. We are getting closer to that little range that I was hoping to see so we can potentially take a long in the you know golden pocket support range. Okay, so again, possibility of a long here, but let's not just jump right in because we are in an area where we previously wanted to get in, right? We wanna jump in and figure out what's going with the charts, the backend data first. So that's kind of where we're at here. Uh, friendly reminder, we do still have a small CME gap here. It's not substantial, right around 54,000. Uh, if that does happen, then uh, there's a solid chance we'll see a pivot from there. That's a very common characteristic, but otherwise, the more important thing to recognize here is that we're on the downtrend, we're moving down. Sometimes buying the dip isn't always the best thing unless you have a lot of supporting factors, okay? So again, Buying certain dips can work out and be effective, uh, but we want to double check and you know make sure we're on the right side of the tracks here. So let's double check some uh, back end liquidation levels first. If you could please just hit the like button, comment below, absolutely appreciate it. Feel free to join us over at BTCC, awesome exchange, new uh, partner here with us. Uh, no KYC or VPN required. I got some awesome bonuses right now. So let's take a look here at the back end data here and kind of see what's going on because there is a lot of liquidation to the downside. It probably as low as about 55, 54K. What do you know? This range here is roughly where the fair value gap is at right there at 54 to 55,000. So we got some some later longs, if you will, and maybe even some early longs here, upwards of like 60 to 57K, probably locked in there. And then we can kind of see, we zoom out and in a little bit it's not a ton of liquidation compared to the upside, but there's still some, right? We also want to factor in too that this liquidation levels to the upside are diminishing a little bit. So it just implies that some shorts are closing their uh, their trades in profit or their stop loss are adjusting. Either way you look at it, it's a positive sign in the overall sense, but generally speaking, not a tremendous amount of liquidation below us. I know it seems like a lot, but compared to, you know, traditional like large liquidation areas for Bitcoin, there's not a lot to the downside unless you kind of <laughs> include the low 50K range, all right? We don't need to have that conversation just yet. I don't think that's a distinct probability, but it's a possibility. We've got to kind of just be mindful of that, okay? So either way you look at it, liquidation isn't like super telling or, you know, highly indicative of the price direction at this point. What's probably more important is, you know, different areas of support and resistance and obviously potential continuation patterns. So let's take a look at the daily time frame and go from there. So when we were fighting earlier to kind of uh, get, you know, break bullish, so to speak, we were looking to get above 50 in the RSI, okay? Now we're down below that effectively at this point. Generally speaking, that's a negative sign. That implies the price has shifted momentum and lost that that support. Now you gotta keep in mind too, um, you know, this is just an initial test. It doesn't necessarily mean we've broken down. So that's kind of more so like neutral news. The stochastic R side is somewhat of a telling indication there. We've known this for a few days that it's slowing down. Um, but again, that's not like a concrete thing. I think breaking down uh, to the downside on MACD is a little bit more effective, a little bit more important, recognizing that, hey, we actually have shifted momentum, right? So to keep in mind, stochastic R side can be kind of a false positive. It gives you kind of indications super early and they don't always tell you that's the right thing. We still have good momentum though. This to me, is very positive until we lose zero here or break down below this line. Um, I think we are in pretty good shape still. Okay, so again, while the price could and should continue lower, we have some decent support in this range. So let's talk about that. Let's zoom out a little bit and of course kind of visit a few things here on the macro. So if we look at our points of control, just kind of you know factoring in the more recent data ever since we've been what fifty thousand or higher. We can see the most amount of liquidation, sorry, liquidity rather, um, volume effectively at 64,000 and uh, secondary to that, maybe 61,000. Okay, so again, larger points of control, 67,000, we've known that previously. Um, so just some areas to consider. Again, 61,000, it's interesting that that is one of the heavier concentrations here recently because that is close to where the price action topped out here, okay? So either way you look at it, 61, 64, and 67, every 3,000 essentially is a, uh, those key areas. So that's important to recognize that because that's that's above the price action right now, and that works as a resistance, okay? Now let's jump out to the weekly now that we've finished our weekly candle and kind of see what's going on here. Uh, this is an ugly chart. Let's go ahead and shift gears and kind of see where we're at. So when we look at some important indications here, we're still over the 50-day SMA. That's a big deal for us. But again, being below the 20-day SMA, I'm not, I'm not saying that's bearish at all. It just implies we're not bullish yet. All the more reason why we need to get above that like 62K shelf that we've had for a little while to be able to kind of you know break out and have potential to continue further up. Okay. So again, weekly isn't looking terrible. We're kind of just hanging out at this little 50 area on the RSI. But again, 
Closing at 60,000, 61K or higher is extremely important because that would put us in a position where we're over 50 in the RSI and we're gonna be starting to test that 20 day SMA. Those are important things to me. Uh, at this point though, we don't have really strong momentum per se. There's not like a lot of indications on the weekly that we're still likely to continue higher. Keep in mind, this is September. September is notorious for being a red month. So I'd be surprised if the price just you know shoots up here soon. Keep in mind, we got the Fed meeting this week and some interest rate uh, you know cuts, so to speak. That plays an opposite role in a lot of cases in the market. So you'd be surprised. You might think that the, pri the price would go up for Bitcoin, but a lot of times it can go the opposite direction. Uh, anyways, there's more macro perspective there we can talk about later. But the key takeaway here is that the weekly is it's okay. It's just not great. It's pretty much the market right now, right? It's okay. It's just not awesome. Uh, anyways, it's kind of a funny, funny little thing. I, I tend to, to laugh at stuff like that. Um, okay, so let's look at the daily time frame really quick just to summarize. We're testing the 20-day SMA as we speak. So again, a closure at 58K or 57.5 or higher is, is extremely important. Once more, 20-day SMA isn't like a massive support level. It's just kind of an indication that we've broken bearish if we're below it, right? Last time we came below the 20 on the SMA, we continued much lower. Now, it's not a guarantee, but it's a distinct probability that you're going to find further downside when you break below that level. And the inverse could be said here too. We broke above, we continued higher. We broke above here, continued higher for a day. Now it's right back to retest. So generally speaking, staying above that level is pretty important, okay? So let's take, double check here, a couple of other things here on the four hour and kind of work our way down. And uh, I'll clean up the chart, folks, by the way, too, in case you're not familiar, maybe you're new to the channel. I have a Twitter, Telegram, Discord. I post playout charts here, kind of just letting you know specific things that I see in certain coins. It's all available there for you. I also post liquidation data too. So I'll have that for Bitcoin here shortly. And by the way, these X's on the chart are just a couple of pivot points, areas that might be worth considering taking along. This previous one didn't take, uh, didn't take of course, because that was the ascending trend. Generally speaking, when the price is uh, testing an ascending trend line, you're more likely to find success with it bouncing through that. Now that we've broken through that, we could expect a bearish back test that ascending trend line and potentially pull back further. And we may even see our ABC pattern in that regard, where this is the A here, our B still has yet to be discovered, and our C could be lower to possibly even fill a CME gap. Okay. So again, this is always ever changing. So just keep in mind, you got to kind of stay fluent with the charts. You can't just analyze one time last week and just you know, say it's all good now. Uh, exactly why we look at this twice a day. Having said that, this area right here, this is good. We're, we're kind of in the range of where I wanted to consider entry originally. So let's see if that is worthwhile. We've already established the general consensus in the overall sense, right? The weekly is, is average. It's kind of breaking even, if you will. Daily time frame is starting to diverge, but hasn't fully. And the four hour time frame is definitely diverging. So we can see we're under 50 on the RSI, stochastic swinging down, money flow index pulling back, MACD diverging. Uh, a lot of reasons why the price is probably more likely to continue lower just in the overall sense here. We do take a look at some SMAs here. We are holding above the 50 day SMA for the moment, but still nothing super substantial there. All right, that's just kind of a consolation if anything, nothing you really wanna bet a trade on. Now, again, if you look at FIB levels here, this is where things get kind of interesting. We got our 0.618 FIB level here, basically our golden pocket. That's generally a place in which we see a pivot. So in bullish type of trends, situations like this, it's more common for the price action to bounce off this area and continue higher. Now, it may not be a super substantial bounce. It might just be like the beginning of a head and shoulders pattern, right? That could be what we're starting right now. Um, so if the price does go up, I would expect to see some resistance here, maybe at the 0.382, that 58.7 range for a potential rejection. In fact, that might actually be a better consideration to short at that level than to take a long now, okay? Again, if you do take a long now, a tight long would make sense, but if that doesn't end up working out, perhaps a hedge with a short um, in the 58.5K range. Again, just kind of spitballing, throwing some ideas out there, but we have a decent amount of resistance here now, and there's a solid chance that that could be the new, the new top, at least in this little wave, if you will, to the, to the pullback to the downside. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and double check the hourly, see where we're at. We've obviously confirmed bearish and descent here, all green lights here on leaving your short position open if you have one. Okay, so there shouldn't be really any reason to take a long at this point. So again, even in hindsight, even though I really want to take a long at 57.5, um, it seems like that window of opportunity has since closed or just things don't look quite as good now as they did before. Well, this is a solid pivot point. We should probably see the price recover to an extent. I'd be more apt to wanting to take a short position at the 58.5. Uh, 
uh, range up here, somewhere in this uh, this this fib level, about 58.758. It seems like more sensible. Again, just based on the way the market's going right now, and what the, you know the Fed, the Fed, and everything, we've never we haven't really seen too many positive results this year with the Fed meeting, uh, minus the first couple uh, beginning of the year. Those were good, but the last few have been pretty consistent um, pullbacks as a result of it. Just know it's extremely volatile. Price will shoot up and down. Um, using high leverage during that time is a very, very bad idea. I've traded into Fed meetings before, and it's really not that terrible as long as you essentially uh, pay attention to what's going on, but also make sure you uh, you use low leverage and low position size. You can survive that if you do, all right? Again, generally best to wait until things go off and then afterwards to consider that. Either way you look at it, we'll talk about that later. Thanks again um, for everyone who's been supporting the channel. Deeply appreciate it. This is really awesome. It's a great part of my life to be able to you know, interact with you in whichever regard. So again, if you're part of our Discord, jump on over there. We got some really awesome fun stuff going on there. Um, a lot of lear good learning uh, content as well. It's all available for you. But more important, um, you know, just when you band together, you work with other people while trading, it makes it a lot easier and it's more manageable. Okay. So hypothetically, um, I get to know you better. I look forward to it. All right. Thanks again so much for your time. I look forward to seeing the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Take care out there.